Hey folks, this is Jeff Lutz again with Bee Best Beer Removal, and we're going to be removing a beehive from this attic today. As you can see, if you look over my shoulder here, you can see stains up there in those attic ventilation holes and also com coming out around the rafter tails. And the stucco around the window is all soaked with honey because uh, companies had come out here and sprayed the hive and they didn't remove it. So we've been hired to come out and open up the structure, clean out all the hive and honeycomb from the structure to keep this from continuing to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and get up there now and go ahead and get it started. Now you can see the difference how this hive was here, the other hive was in this bay right here. You can see the difference. You can see how it's totally separated. If it was part of the same hive, you would have noticed that this would have gotten yellower and yellower and lighter and lighter going across and then it would have been the same color in the end. But when you go from this color to that color and there's a little gap, you know, in this case about a six Five, you know, six to seven inch gap in between them, then you know it's a, another swarm head moved in. So, I'll go ahead and start scraping it out now. Hold up. Um, the main thing is you don't want to use epoxy foam. If you're going to bee proof, you want to use uh, uh, silicone, usually General Electric. It doesn't have to be General Electric, but you want 100% in most cases. Uh, siliconized product, it's a rubberized uh, silicone. And when it dries, it's extremely durable, and the bees can't really eat through it. And the other thing is for larger gaps and holes, you use 1 8 inch hardware cloth. The epoxy foam, as you can see, I can, I can get through this. And in most cases, it's, it just falls apart. Now this was on the inside, so it wasn't exposed to the sun. But the problem is, the rodents, when you leave the hive in here, they'll eat right through this, they'll chew right through it. Now granted, you know, they can chew through the silicone and then they can eat through the, the, the screening too. The rodents, you know, can uh, chew through that with their teeth. But the thing is, the bees can't eat through the silicone and they can't eat through the, the, uh, the screening that you put on there. Mm. So they're not going to be able to land on there and just chew through it. A latex product, if it's an established hive that's been in there for a while, they'll land on that and they'll just start chewing on it until they actually get right back into the structure and start building a hive again. Jeez. Yep. How long was this thing here for? Uh, probably been in here, I would guess from what I'm looking at and how much honey ran out of it. It probably been here for probably about, I would guess, somewhere around uh, four to five years. Yep. Some of it newer than others? You can see, well yeah, you can see how this comb here, you can see how much lighter this is. And the size, you know, they're just getting started. You can see that little piece that was just being built right there. And you can see how the other ones are, they're, you know, they're 16, 18 inches long, and you can see how the color is a lot darker. Mm. So this was a startup. This one had brought, this one had probably been in there, I would guess, from the size of it, probably a couple of weeks. Uh, you can see what a few weeks can do and what, what four and five years can do. I mentioned this while we're talking about the hives. If this was the hive, the original hive that was in there, and they had gotten it eliminated and sealed up before it gotten as large as it had, and they had gotten it when it was this big, only a couple of weeks old, roughly, they could have effectively eliminated and bee proofed it and they wouldn't have had ongoing long-term problems because there wouldn't have been as much hive and honeycomb in there.